First off, let's talk design principles. I don't want to do any gluing. Traditional way of making lures, print one half, print the other half, put in whatever you want to do and glue them together. Don't want to do that. We don't need to do that. We're 3D printing. Let's think about new ways to do things. Number two, no sanding, or in my case, as little sanding as possible. It's difficult to print a, at least a rounded lure on a 3D resin printer without having to do some sanding from the supports but we're gonna minimize that as much as possible. And number three, internal ballast or internal weights. I don't wanna add any weight to this lure. It's a wake bait, it's supposed to float. So as long as we get the weight distribution correct, it should float kind of, you know, straight up and down like we want it to pretty easily. So let's see how we design this lure in Fusion 360. All right, so once I have my body in place, I basically want to use a rather organically shaped split line. And my thought here is the back part is gonna be solid, the body is gonna be solid resin, and this top part here will be the hollow shell. And then I just execute the split command using that line, so I end up with these three bodies. And then I shell this middle body, this weight body here. So then I design my lip, and I just place it into the body, and I combine those bodies together uh, cut the lip out of the body, but keep the lip here. So then I do a sketch in the front, down the center line, which I will use to extrude the back part here. Then the front I want at an angle. So I have this sketch here. After I sketch that line on the plane, I'll just use the pipe command to fill in those holes. And then we move along to kind of the more interesting stuff here. I draw the eye and then I use the offset command to offset another circle in about 1.5 millimeters. So then what I do is extrude the center hole all the way through. And then this hole for the outer ring, if you will, I just extrude it in and I go from the object, which is this outside object. And I just went in about half a millimeter. That's just gonna give me this little inset to place my eye into. Hey guys, I know what you're thinking, dude, I don't want to model a lure, dude. I don't have time for that mess. I just want the file. That's where you need to join my Patreon community, where every month I release all the fishing lures I've designed, whether that's a hard lure, soft plastic mold, even tools like stencils that you can 3D print on your own 3D printer at home. It's only 12 bucks a month, and you can do whatever you want to with the files. You want to paint them yourself and sell them? You want to shoot a bunch of my lures that I designed and sell them to your friends, neighbors, and internet dudes and dudettes? That's cool, man. Totally royalty free. Just give me a shout out. The link is below, 12 bucks a month. Get everything you need. Thanks, bro. So that's great. We got our lure out of Fusion 360 and it's all printed up. Now, one thing that you'll see here is this is very plain Jane bait body here, right? There's really no additional fins or gills or anything like that. When I'm prototyping a lure, I wait to add all that stuff to the end. It doesn't really impact the performance of the lure, but the way I do it, I do it by exporting it out of Fusion 360 and into Blender and then adding all that kind of fancy features. And until I get the lure absolutely dead solid perfect, that's just a waste of time. So I'm actually using a blend of resins to print this with. I'm using Sarai Tech Build with some added Tenacious. I would guess, you know, 30-ish percent. I don't know, I just dumped it in there to look good. Uh, the Tenacious adds flexibility, which helps uh, actually strengthen the, the lure body itself. And it helps with, uh, when I'm putting in the screw eyes, that they can kind of bite into the resin instead of kind of cracking it and expanding it too much. I don't know if this is the perfect mix yet. It's just kind of what I had on hand. We're gonna be getting into resin uh, mixes and just straight up resins, best for uh, 3D printed lures in future episodes. So I decided to go ahead and print five because you know, why not? It takes the same amount of time to print one as it does to print five. And I figured that if I messed up any, either in painting or had any damage to them while I was putting them together, I'd always have some extra bodies around. And that came in handy. After printing, we just got a quick wash and denatured alcohol, some curing, and we are pretty much ready to go. I decided to do some extra curing on this particular lure to make sure that the inside was very well cured. Now, I don't think this is 100% necessary. It's really not necessary if you're using a clear resin uh, because that internal cavity will cure very well. But in this case, I'm gonna put some plastic beads and maybe a bead or two in there. And I wanna make sure that that inside is very uh, firm and well cured so they don't stick in there. Oh, and I also printed some diving lips, in this case, kind of more like wake lips, on my other printer with some Sorayatek Blue Clear. Again, don't get too hung up on the exact resin I'm using. My main concern was that it was clear. Sorayatek Blue Clear was the only clear resin I had on hand. Just so happens to be an extremely, extremely tough resin, which I think is great, but I'm not so sure it's necessary. So 
So before we put that dive lip on, we're gonna put the screw eyes in and we're gonna do all of our painting. The dive lip is kind of the last thing that goes on before my clear coat. This kind of makes it somewhat easier to paint and that I don't have to tape up and mask off that lip. It does make it a little more difficult and then it's kind of hard to get a hold of the lure. So the last thing I do after painting, put on the hook, I put a swivel on the back. I don't like to put a treble hook on the back of my wake baits. For me personally, where I'm fishing, over a lot of oyster reefs, over a lot of oyster beds, a lot of grass. And so that extra hook in the back doesn't really lead to that many more hookups. And it really increases the amount of snags I get. All right, we're all done. Let's see how it floats. If I was smart, I would have done this before I put all this work into it. but. Uh, you know, I just got a little too excited to uh, paint this lure and, and see how it worked. So let's throw it in the tank and see if it floats right. <laughs> Killer dude. Absolutely perfect floating. That is amazing. Well, let's see how she fishes. Oh man, it's beautiful this morning. This baby works. That seems to be pretty perfect actually. It's looking good. Oh, got him. It's a little trout. Nice, man. Thanks, buddy. There he is. There he is, baby. Yeah. It's a wake bait I printed. Yeah. There he is. Oh, got him. Got him on the rebound. <laughs> you double daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, dude, you see that? That was crazy. <laughs> I knew you were in here, bro. <laughs> oh, man. I was like just about to pull it up out of the water, and then boom. Holy. Oh, it slams up. Oh, I knew you were in here, bro. <laughs> that was crazy. Why I like the wake bait. You get all the top water fun without all the top water work. Now, I know in the back of this, there's a channel that's cut through, not all the way. Almost looks man-made, but kind of messed around with a redfish up there one day. Don't tell my wife, but we got a real connection. On a day like today, man, you can just they are all friggin' day. Man, that was a pretty good day. I kind of forgot how many fish I caught. I think it was a roughly eight to 10 or something like that, but it was a blast. I'd say a majority of them were on my wake bait. I did throw a soft plastic for a little bit, caught a few speckled trout on that, but all the red fish were on my wake bait. But really there's nothing better than catching fish on a lure that you made. And in this case, like I made it from scratch, design wise, printed it, painted it, the whole nine yards. Really, really killer day. Here's a quick peek at the lure after I was done fishing. Looks pretty solid, no major issues. I think most of these scratches are actually from the hook and not the fish. Totally survived just fine. And I was throwing it over oyster beds and all kinds of stuff. And like I said, I think there's four or five redfish on there at least, a couple of speckled trout. Looks pretty good. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're interested in buying a 3D printer for fishing lures or molds, I have a whole playlist right here where I break down some of the things you need to think about when you're purchasing a 3D printer. And as I progress with this lure and more, that whole lure playlist will be right here. Take care, tight lines. Dude, can you see the mosquitoes, bro? This is crazy. Mosquitoes are... 
absolutely insane. These mosquitoes. Jesus, the mosquitoes. Did you bring that spray with you? Yep. I'm gonna need some, I think. 